The Oscars this year were pretty much perfect, in my opinion. Moonlight got Best Picture, Damien got Best Director, I mean, things just all fell into the right places. Despite these wins, there was one award that left me pretty confused. La La Land winning Best Cinematography. Don't get me wrong, at the time I still thought La La Land cinematography was outstanding, but I really thought Arrival deserved that one. Plus, La La Land was pretty much guaranteed to win either Best Director or Best Picture, so why does it need this award? It wasn't until I went back to the theater two weeks later that I realized the cinematography, specifically the color, is a story in itself and definitely proves that La La Land had the best cinematography of that year. Something I noticed within my first viewing of La La Land was the color. Nothing significant about it, just that. The movie is incredibly vibrant, which makes sense considering how exciting the plot itself is. There was something more colorful about La La Land compared to the other movies, and that's its use of primary colors. Red, yellow, blue, I mean you know the primary colors, who am I kidding? The primary colors are each very different from one another, obviously, that's not even anything you didn't know at this point. But you get a sense of separation from that. Nothing really meshes together, but it looks pretty good, right? We all love color and different colors together because it looks pretty. With all this being said, I see director of photography Linus Sandgren's heavy use of these colors as a symbol for Hollywood. Of course, everything looks pretty and luxurious and vibrant. We get that from the party scene from the song Someone in the Crowd in the beginning. But the colors don't provide us with much heart or connection. They're all so different from one another, they just look good and that's it. The reds are being reds, while the blues are being blues, and the yellows, yeah, you guessed it, are being yellowed. This vibe you get from the film perfectly represents where our two protagonists are at in the story. Mia and Sebastian are their own selves in this beginning. Going further with that, it's evident that Mia comes with a lot more of this vibrancy in her introduction than Sebastian, which makes sense considering how wrapped up in her Hollywood glamour she tends to be, and how true to the actual art Sebastian remains. All of this will come back later in the video. The most notable and obvious example of these primary colors causing a separation is the pool party, specifically this shot. Sebastian is in all red, whereas Mia is in yellow. The two are just not together in any way. Two completely different colors, two completely different people. That same night, the famous tap dancing scene that appears on the cover happens. In this scene, the primary colors aren't so separated. In fact, purple takes up most of the color palette. By mixing the primary colors to this extent, the audience feels a sense of warmth a sense of connection at one of the most important parts of the film. This balance and mixture plays out throughout the relationship during the dark orange vibe you get in the jazz club scene, or the purple you get in the observatory scene, and last but not least, the green light shining across the room when they play City of Stars. You might also recall Mia's first interaction with Sebastian, watching him play in the restaurant. Keep in mind the color palette in that scene was almost entirely orange. Coincidence? Through all these moments of these two together, we get a balanced mixture that makes everything feel pretty in its own way. All the colors are in the right places. For a second, Hollywood and the glamour that comes with it just doesn't matter. This warmth goes away, or at least starts to, the same time Sebastian plays a show with his new band in front of Mia for the first time. We start to see these primary colors popping out again. Red, yellow, blue, yellow, red. So much brightness with little connection to the audience, specifically Mia. We get this feeling in this scene that maybe things aren't mixing as well as they used to, and coincidentally, after this everything starts going downhill for their relationship. At both characters rock bottom in the film, Sebastian misses Mia's big performance for a photo shoot, and we see those character traits reversed. Sebastian is at this shoot surrounded by reds, yellows, blues, sort of similar to how Mia was surrounded by all of that in the beginning. Meanwhile, Mia is performing her show and her setting remains pretty neutral and mostly dark, similar to Sebastian's intro. Each character has changed for either the better or the worse, and they're on the opposite sides of the spectrum now, and you can figure all of this out just by looking at the color. Fast forward and we find ourselves in the final scene, where Sebastian and Mia think about what could have been. In this amazing montage, the primary colors are more out there than ever. You have entire settings that are all red, settings that are all blue, you have black and white at one point, I mean, it's all cute, but it just seems a little off and a little one-dimensional. This was the moment I realized that these colors really do represent Hollywood and separation. Hollywood is all about perfection. Hollywood lacks authenticity and real emotions and heart. If they stayed together, they would have had this amazing, almost perfect relationship, but where is the heart and the warmth? Life really isn't like that. You feel all that happiness and epicness when watching that montage, but it isn't until the camera cuts back to the scene of them driving up to the club and sitting in those chairs, watching the pianist perform, that you realize and really start to feel that emotion in this relationship. It is in that final scene that the color really does sum up one of the most important messages of the story. That message being, behind every red, yellow, and blue, there lies different shades, and the trueness of those colors isn't always on its surface. Color is obviously a huge part of this film. Without it, the story definitely wouldn't have worked the same way or have been nearly as effective. While this could have all just been one crazy theory and was completely unintentional, I do know Damien Chazelle likes to play around quite a bit with color tones judging by his earlier work on Whiplash. I could go on for hours about all the different examples in this film where the color has a say in the scene, but nobody really wants that. True or not, the color, the cinematography, the story, the acting, the music, everything about La La Land continues to amaze me with every watch and I can't wait to see it again.